What's up guys? I know this video is gonna be like so late, probably like halfway through the month of July, possibly further, but I needed to film my June reading wrap up. It's also just gonna be, it's kind of some of July as well, just because I know I'm gonna be like a little offbeat recently. I was on vacation, so I had a lot of downtime to read, but this month I have VBS and I have camp and I have a summer class, and so it's probably just gonna be a lot of reading from that, but I hope to do some other reading. So I'm just gonna like catch you guys up to speed with everything I've read since, I think, The Inheritance Games. That may have been the last that I read. I don't even remember. I don't remember whatever was in the, um, the May reading wrap up. But now I have a stack of books here. Oh. And I also have some on my phone because I did listen to an Audible. I think it was just one that I have that's not in paperback form. Um, that was an Audible. So let me just like make these look cute. I have a Goodreads account and so I post like everything that I read on there. I put my reviews. I usually don't type out reviews unless I absolutely like love or like, I don't think I've ever wrote like a hate comment on a book, but this month was pretty good. There definitely were some books in there that were memorable that I really just liked. But there's also two that I just like, oh, I just want to rant about, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to give you guys a wrap up just because I don't want to get too far into it. And I only have 20 minutes on this SD card, so it has to be under 20 minutes. But if you guys ever want to hear me rant, just like let me know and I can do like a video of like ranting about books I hate or like hyping up the books I love kind of video. Whatever you guys, whatever you guys feel. I know you guys aren't like a book loving group, it seems like, but if you are, then yay. Okay, yes, yes, let me pick up the first book. So this book I read um, July 2nd and I finished it July 3rd, and this is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I gave this book three stars, but here's why. So this book is so, so cute, and it just like reminds you of like a very innocent, romance that's just like almost too good to be true but nonetheless adorable but the only reason i gave it a three star instead of higher is just because it didn't really like suck me in um like some romance books can but it just kind of there's certain parts that i was like okay this person's getting annoying i know that's like my i guess i just must find people really irritating super fast i feel like that in my writing too like i'll just like write a character and i'm like this person's annoying but I don't know, maybe I'm just like the annoyance type. However, I love, so I watched Haley Pham who said she loved this because it was like a closed door romance, which basically means like no spice. And I loved that. I honestly appreciated that so much more than seeing all these scenes that are just like so much lust and it just like, okay, like get on with it. You know what I mean? So this was so adorable. I honestly, the, that's the only reason I'm giving it is a three star is just like comparing it to other romances that I've read I don't know if I could like bump it up there to like some of these that I read this month But it was so cute anyways So cute and I do recommend it like three stars pretty high still I still recommend it Next one that I read was a five star for me I heard such good things about it and I just had to had to read it And this is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune Oh my gosh, this is about, I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you what the last one was about. <laughs> I just, I gotta tell you. At least, I'm, some of these I'll tell you what it's about, but this is about a girl who basically like, it's a um, friends to lovers trope. And so they were like best friends growing up at this little beach house um, or lake house. I think it's a lake house. Yeah, lake shore. And um, it's like the two brothers and then there's some kind of falling out and then he has to go back because, or Persephone has to go back to the lake house because their mom just passed away. So yeah, when Percy returns to the lake for Sam's mother's funeral, their connection is undeniable as it has always been. But until Percy can confront the decision she's made, they'll never know whether their love is bigger than the biggest mistakes of their past. Told over the course of six years and one weekend. It's so cute. There's still parts in it, like it wasn't, Haley says this all the time in her video. I love Haley fan, but like in her videos, she's always like, this one like is a five star, but like this is a six. So like six is like the top, like the inheritance games for me were like a six star. 
this is a five star this is so good um i can only complain a little bit and it's just i know everyone likes the spicy scenes but sometimes i'm just like can you guys just like talk like <laughs> okay this one i don't have the book with me i can't find it so i may have let someone borrow it i'm honestly really confused where i put it but it is the summer i turned pretty um I gave this a two star and I know people are probably like what what is wrong with you so this is like a love triangle between um, I think her name's like Isabella but her nickname's belly she goes to this beach house with her mom and her mom's best friend and her boys and basically she's like in a love triangle with two of the brothers it's this whole thing and then like there's a it's a trilogy so the I only read the first book I do plan on reading the second two I gave it a two stars just because I found like the love interest like they didn't entertain me there was one brother I preferred so much more over the other I think I was just like disappointed and confused and like where the interest was coming from I just didn't understand it some of the characters were bland the writing was like still good like I didn't find the writing annoying just some of the dialogue like the main character she annoyed me so much I know I'm sorry I keep saying that but like she actually got on my nerves like I seriously was just like dude like can you stop <laughs> being like two years old um however I did watch the show and I can like never say this I swear but the show is so much better than the book I just feel like that I feel like I had to get that out there normally I will say that the book is way better than the show way better than the movie but I really like the show a lot a lot better than the book so that was a two star for me unfortunately all right the next one i read was i read a lot of romances just so you guys know like that's what i do in summer is i just love reading romances i read the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood this was such a cute book i actually wanted to dnf it like 40 pages in just because i already found myself bored and i love romances written in first point of view and this is in third i believe and so i just wasn't really clicking with it at first and so i was like eh. I'm not feeling it as much but basically this is about a girl um, named Olive who's in like it's like a stem romance so like the sciencey nerdy kind of type of love but like she runs into someone in the bathroom with expired contacts and gets like motivated to keep going through school and then she accidentally well not accidentally she purposely kisses this guy out of nowhere to prove something to someone I can't even remember um, but then she doesn't even know what she just did or who that was and she finds out it was like a professor who's only like i think it was like less than 10 years older than her so they were pretty close in age um i think it was less than eight so um then she basically uh goes through this whole science conference thing and she's trying to get her um project out there but it's like a romance between the two characters adam carlson and olive smith i'm not the best at like describing these books because it's so hard for me to describe them without like getting into details but it was really cute and i did rate this i put five on good root goodreads but it's more like a 4.5 stars it's really really cheesy but i love the cheesy romances and so that's why i really liked this um there is books that have better writing out there but just i love cheesy romances and like i can't complain like i'm not like oh this isn't mature or like things like that and honestly it was i mean there's a lot of science in there a lot of talk i did not understand okay i gotta pick up the speed because my camera is running out of time this next one i was honestly really excited for and i've had it on my uh reading list for probably like a year like i really wanted to read this book i don't know why but i was always really interested in it and this is the final girls support group by grady hendrix i did not know this book was like satire like I knew there was some humor in it, but I didn't know it was like a lot of satire on like horror movies and films and books and things like that. And honestly, I was just kind of disappointed and not TMI, but there is one specific scene in this book that just like, it's like, I can't get it out of my mind and not in a good way. It's like, oh, like I can't even like move past it like it actually makes me feel terrible inside. um but basically if you know what final girls are they're like the last girls standing during like some kind of murder spree um or like the one that kills their killer the one that kills the killer of like their family or friends or whatever and they're the last girl standing 
among all their other friends and family, things like that. So it's about like these girls who are final girls in a support group, but then someone dies and it's like one of the final girls, she dies and they all just kind of like go crazy, do their own sort of thing and then they're trapped in this time thing where they're trying to figure out who the killer is, kind of like that. But I know it sounds pretty interesting if you're listening to that and you're like, hmm, yeah. It was like a three star. I would have gave it two, but it was pretty good writing, I will say. And I do think some of it was kind of brilliant, but I just, it's just, I don't think it was like the book for me, if that makes sense. All right, the next one I read was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Everyone is recommending Taylor Jenkins Reid as an author. I really wanted to read Daisy Jones and the Six. I have uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo up there, but I just haven't gotten to it. I don't know when I will, but I will get to it. Um, but this is about Malibu, August 1983, the day of Nina Riva's annual end of summer party. Everyone looks forward to these parties. The Riva family is very popular and they're basically celebrities because of their father, Mick Riva, Riva, I don't know, who was like a singer. Um, but it's basically like, it's kind of cool. The point of view flips back from like Nina's family's like mom, June, and her like love story with Mick and then back to like Nina's family. So it's very cool. And I honestly liked it more than I thought I was going to. There's some romance in there, but it's ma mainly just like, kind of like a family drama, um, growing up kind of thing, like secrets coming out, um, a crazy night and just like finishing it off pretty strong. Uh, I gave this a four stars just because it wasn't like the, a book that I probably would like normally read, but it did surprise me and four star for sure because the writing was amazing and it did keep me on like hook. I finished it pretty fast. I finished it in two days um, and I read it on the beach. So it was a nice little beach read. Um, I did like it. It was pretty good. Okay. Then I took like a, a enormous break from reading um, and I was like, okay, I got to get back up to it. So this was the beginning of July. So now we're like in the beginning of like July, but I just need to like get them out there in case I don't really have a lot of books this month that I read because of school and camp and things like that. So the next one I read was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. So I read Love and Other Words in the past. Nobody come at me, but I really did not like that book. I read it really, really fast and I was honestly really tired when I read it. So I don't know if like that had to do with part of it but I just was not vibing and everyone say, says how much they love that book. So I don't know what's wrong with me. I may need to like go back and try to like read it again. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like it. There was, it was a little too much, but I'll kind of like talk about what I mean by a little too much in the next book I'm gonna write. Cause, oh boy, this was really cute. I gave this like a 4.5 stars. It's basically like an enemies to lovers trope, which is my favorite. I love enemies to lovers. I just love seeing it happen. But it's basically about a girl and her twin sister and it's her twin sister's birthday. Her name's, a er, wow. Twin sister's wedding. Her name's Amy and she's getting married to Dane who also has a brother named Ethan. And Olive, Amy's twin, is like enemies with Ethan. She does not like him. But then everyone at the party eats like shellfish and they get really sick from food poisoning. And the only two people who did not get sick are Ethan and Olive. And Olive wants, or and Amy wants Olive to take her vacation to Maui. Then Dane, Ethan's brother, wants Ethan to take it as well. So they have to take it together and they basically have to act like a couple so they don't ruin anything. And it's basically, you know, a little romance. It is so so cute. I gave it like a 4.5 stars. Honestly, it was just like, Ethan was really sweet and just, oh, uh, he was just like a boy. You definitely could just be like, oh, he's so cute. So it was definitely really good. I, the reason I only get like these romances, like 4.5s and not fives, like even every summer after kind of have this too, every summer after, I just don't like vulgarity in books, honestly, like profanity and things like that. It just kind of like, mm, but I know it's just like common. So that was really it in this book was just some of the vulgarity and things like that. And I think there was just like so many things that kept happening towards the end that I was like, okay, whoa, like what is going on? But then it got like so good and I listened to it. So it was pretty, pretty dope at the end. I don't even know where to start. It's The Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy. 
I started this a couple days ago and I probably have like 50 pages left and I DNF'd it. I'm giving up with it. I just, it's about this girl named Mac who's also Mackenzie. She's like super rich and then there's this boy named Cooper who's like known as like the townie and like the rich people are known as like clones in this little lake city or beach town, Avalon Bay I believe. And so, I don't know, there's like a cheating trope in it and I don't like the cheating trope, but it's basically about like Mac and Cooper and they're like twisted ways that they get together, but I don't like how it, it doesn't praise cheating necessarily, but like it's just not the way, I don't know. And it was most definitely, I did not find their attraction like cute. It was just very lustful and that was not cute. So I gave it a two star because there's some parts in it like that I found cool. Like I really like Steph, one of the characters. I liked, I liked Mac sometimes. I liked that she reminded me of me in a lot of ways. Um, not every way, <laughs> but in a lot of ways she reminded me of myself of just like needing to like stick up to people and stop giving people what they want and I was like, hmm, that's pretty good. But you know, the rest of the book was just kind of, ugh. it was just kind of gross. Sorry, Elle. I know a lot of people do like this book. I just, it was literally like lust all the time and very descriptive. <laughs> like, uh, like it's just, yeah. Yeah, and I was listening to it. I got the copy to like read along and listen. And I did not like listening to them describe those things, so. I believe those are all the books that I read this month. It was a cute reading month filled with romances. Hopefully I'm gonna start on one of these bad boys next. I really wanna get into Truly Devious, which is sitting on this book stack that I'm trying to hold my camera up with. I love, love thrillers, and I feel like I maybe need a romance break just cause I feel like the good girl complex just really put me off. <laughs> so maybe I'll go read some thrillers now, but I love you guys so much. My voice is getting really tired, so I will talk to you guys very soon. I gotta edit so many videos this week, so I'm sure you'll see too much of me on the internet, but love you guys. I'll see you later.